<laughs> and speaking of, speaking of the Daytona 500, our very own Rick Ragnuth is live from Daytona with a preview, and he's joined by legendary driver Jimmy Johnson. Rick, what are you guys up to? Griff, it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I've been covering this race. I think it's been this is my 11th year coming here. Uh, I've never interviewed Jimmy Johnson. So thank you for being up with us this morning. Yeah, it's great to hang out. We're pretty excited. So, uh, it, like, in the, the list of racers, certainly the guys right now, you're at the top. Top, uh, yeah, I guess, getting close on age and then, you know, our stats and success we've had on track. It's just been amazing, too. So um, it's amazing how fast time goes, but I'm having a great time. Yeah, and I was referring to success, not age, <laughs> but you brought it up, so I'll go with it. You're 42 now, which is getting up there a little bit, but, it, you know, you can, you can race for a long time. How much longer can you do this? And also, you still feel like you're competitive. You haven't lost anything. No, I, I think our sport really benefits um, maturity and experience. So I, I certainly have more of that than, than most in the field right now. And, and I really work hard to keep my body sharp and, and mind as well. So um, I've got at least three more years. I signed a contract extension through 2020. And uh, hopefully we can get that eighth championship, if not more. Yeah, so eighth champion, like year-end cha year champion, but you've won Daytona twice. Uh, in 2016, you were a year-end champion, but it's been, I think, five years since you've won here. How do you feel going into this season? You didn't have a great season last year. Uh, was that just a fluke and you're back on, you're ready for this year? Yeah, the second half of last season just wasn't what we wanted on the, the, the Lowe's car and then certainly in Hendrick Motorsports. Um, through the offseason, there's been a lot of change going on, and I feel like we're going to be much more competitive this year. And, and uh, we'll see if we can start things off with a win here in Daytona. The racing here is much different than a lot of the tracks that we race on. Uh, so I, I've already used up two race cars as an example in the Clash and then also in the, uh, the duels. So we're in our third car for the Daytona 500, and um, hopefully we don't get caught up in anything in it. Yeah, so uh, you've been doing this since a long time. You're from San Diego, which is not that typical of a place, I don't think, to, to start in racing. But how old were you when you started? And then if you've been doing it that long, how do you ever give it up? Yeah, I started riding dirt bikes at the age of four. My grandparents owned a motorcycle shop out there, and that's kind of my entry point into motorsports. Raced dirt bikes for a long, long time. Never thought NASCAR would be <clears throat> kind of the place for me. It was so, especially back in the 70s and 80s, it was just on the East Coast. And uh, my journey through racing and involvement with Chevrolet led me to NASCAR led me to the East Coast, and then now it's obviously a nationalized sport, and it's turned out to be great for me. Yeah, and you've been great for the sport. So thank, thank you so you. much for being here with us this morning, and wish you best of luck today. Appreciate it. Thank All right, you. or tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Guys, send back to you. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Appreciate Rick. it. Great stuff.